Hi everyone. Um, so the next kind of thing we move into now is looking um, kind of at evolution over time um, and particularly looking at different evidence that we have of this um, and how, how we know that, that evolution has occurred. Um, so for today's lesson, we're just going to take a quick look at um, changes in Earth's geology over time. Um, we are then going to move into looking at fossils, so how they're formed, the different types of fossils, um, and then also how we can compare the age of fossils um, based on uh, a particular thing called stratigraphy. Um, so the first thing here is called the geologic time scale. Um, geology just refers to rocks. Okay, so this is basically, um, I guess, a calendar that has been made um, that shows the different um, periods of time um, of Earth's history based on the rock layers. Now, I just want to um, say here, you don't need to memorise any of this information. Um, what you do need to know, and we'll come to this um, in the next lesson, is the order that different types of organisms evolved, but you certainly don't need to know, you know, these kind of big names like this. But I'll just quickly go through it because there have been questions in the past where it will give you this information and you need to um, understand it. So basically here, if you look down the left here, we've got a time scale. MYA means millions of years ago. Okay, so if we go all the way down here, this is saying that 4,600 million years ago, or 4.6 billion years ago, was when the Earth formed. Okay, so that's the oldest um, history, obviously, of the planet. Um, here you'll see this word eons. Okay, eons are the largest measurements of time. Um, and you can see here we've got um, the Precambrian eon. Um, and then this other one up here, again, you don't need to know the names of those. Then eons, because they're such enormous periods of time, are broken into um, slightly smaller but still huge periods of time called eras. So an era um, is a period of time and they tend to be based on certain types of rock um, and when they formed. Again, you don't need to know the names of these. Then the eras themselves are broken into what we call periods. Um, so here you can see these top three eras are zoomed in on the right here, showing all of the different periods within that. Um, these are considered the basic unit of geological time. Um, but again, we're still talking about pretty huge periods of time. So if we just go down to the bottom here and look at the Cambrian period of the Paleozoic era, that went from 542 million years ago to 488 million years ago. Okay, so we're still looking at, um, you know, dozens of millions of years. Okay, um, on this it shows when certain organisms evolved in each one. Um, and there's a question I'd like you, or a couple of questions um, in the quiz that I want you to have a look at. But basically we can see here that you know, in the Cambrian period, the first fish appeared. Um, and we know that because of fossil evidence, which we'll look at later. Okay, so first fish and first chordates, which were animals with backbones. As we move through time, um, animals started to diversify a bit. Um, we got the first vascular plants appearing. Then we had the amphibians and fish um, diversifying, uh, moving more recently the first reptiles and trees. Um, then we had a major extinction event here, so a lot of things um, died out. Um, then we move further more, re uh, more recently, we had our first mammals and our first dinosaurs. Um, then moving up into the Jurassic period, we got our first birds. Um, so I think people are often quite surprised that mammals um, evolved before birds did. Um, then we had the extinction of the dinosaurs occurring, um, and then after that, the first primates appeared, um, and then you know we're kind of moving up here into our current era, um, and this doesn't even show human evolution because it 
in the scale of things, um, it is such a small period of time. All right, what we're going to focus on is fossilization. Okay, this is um, the process of the remains of a living organism being preserved as a fossil. Okay, so no doubt you've um, you know seen maybe some real fossils at museums or at least um, models of fossils. Um, but there's a few things you need to know about this. The first is the steps of fossilization, so how fossils form. I just want to make it quite clear here as well that the odds are against fossilization. Okay, 99.999% of living things that die do not become fossils. Okay, so the fossils that have been found are extremely rare because it's really, really hard for them to form. So the first thing that has to happen for a fossil to form is firstly that an animal dies. Okay, so let's say here we had a fish in the ocean, the animal dies, and then in the ocean, for example, that would drop down to the ocean bed. Okay, it's not floating anymore, it would drop down, and it gets very rapidly covered by sediment. Okay, so sediment is basically like, like sand. Okay, so the dead organism needs to get very, very quickly covered by sediment. The reason for that, there's a couple of reasons. Firstly, if it's covered, it protects it from scavengers. If scavengers can get to the dead flesh and eat it up, obviously we won't get a fossil because it will just get eaten. Okay, so sediment protects it, um, but it also prevents rapid decomposing. Okay, most dead things will decompose in a relatively short period of time, maybe, you know, a few weeks, a few months. Fossilization takes hundreds or thousands of years to happen. So we need to stop it from decomposing. The reason um, animals or plants won't decompose if they are covered by sediment is that there is no oxygen, heat or light which will promote decomposing. Okay, so it's basically protecting those things from um, decomposing. So it's been covered up here. It's not decomposing too quickly. Um, so over time, we get more and more layers of sediment building up over it because that's just what occurs. And the pressure of those layers turn the sediment into rock. Okay, again, this is just how rocks form. Um, sediment gets lots of pressure put on it and it forms rock. Okay, so here we've got our little dead fish covered by these new layers here of sediment. And over time, and again, we're talking thousands of years here, um, over time, the organism decomposes extremely slowly. And as it does, all of the minerals, so all of um, the kind of rock materials around it, replace the space of the bone or the teeth or the hard tissue that is decomposing. Okay, so um, the bone itself doesn't turn into rock, but what happens is as the bone decomposes, minerals get in there and end up taking the shape of that fossil. There are a few different types of fossils. Um, the one I've just described are what we call mineralized fossils. And they're kind of the main ones that are talked about. They're the big exciting finds for um, paleontologists. So a mineralized fossil is when hard organic materials, so bones or teeth, are replaced by minerals, as we just spoke about, um, and it ends up taking the shape of an organism's tissue. So the perfect example being, you know, when you get fossilized bone that basically looks exactly like a bone, but is pretty much made of rock now because that mineral has replaced um, the rock, uh, the, the bone imprint, okay? Um, so that's called a mineralized fossil. Another thing you can get is called an impression fossil. And if you think about what it means to take an impression of something, that's almost like, um, I guess, kind of like a stamp of something. So in this, um, the organism tissue is imprinted into sedimentary rock, but the tissue itself doesn't become fossilized. 
So if we look at this top picture, that's a great example of a mineralized fossil. It kind of looks like this, this trilobite or this shell um, because it has completely taken its form. In this one, the dead organism basically imprinted into this rock and now we have an imprint of it. So that is an impression fossil. These can take two different forms. You can have um, a cast or a mould. So basically a mould is when the imprint goes inwards and um, a cast would be then if another layer of rock formed over that and we ended up extracting that, that would be the mould, uh, sorry, the cast of that mould. Um, we can also have what's called trace fossils. Trace fossils are when we have evidence of the organism, but it's not actually part of the organism's um, body. Okay. Really good examples of this are when we have um, fossils of footprints. Okay. So that's not technically the bones. It's not part of that animal, but it tells us that that animal existed. Okay, so footprints are a common one. Um, nests or burrows, again, it's not part of the animal, but it indicates that it lived there. Um, and also things like feces, um, or even, you know, you see, um, you know, fossilized vomit, anything like that that tells us that that animal lived at some point. Um, and then another type, and this did come up in the exam um, a few years ago, um, are called mummified fossils. So if you think of, you know, mummies are basically preserved, um, you know, pharaohs. Um, same principle here. So mummified fossils are when an organism dies in very, very, very certain conditions that prevent it from decaying. Okay, so a common example of this is frozen ice um, that will allow, for example, you know, this elephant here to be preserved. It's not um, being replaced by mineral. The actual animal itself was preserved. Um, caves sometimes allow the conditions for this as long as those caves are extremely protected. So they're usually in very, very cold environments. There's no wind um, and there's no scavengers, um, obviously, to eat it. Um, and there's also some examples of um, organisms that have been mummified in um, acidic bogs, which sound delightful, which are basically like swamps that have um, very acidic conditions, again, that stop decomposing. Okay, so in this, um, the organism is not fossilized in rock, but the tissue itself is preserved. So um, they're obviously extremely exciting from a scientific point because, you know, you've still got skin and tissue and all of those kind of things as opposed to just bone. Um, but they are extremely rare. And here you go. You are so, so welcome. Um, my favourite meme, possibly ever, because it's hilarious. Um, but <laughs> the point of this being that fossils generally will only form of very hard tissue. So things like bone or teeth, um, skin, muscle, hair, don't fossilize. Um, so, you know, we can't be sure that dinosaurs didn't in fact look like this. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is how to determine how old a fossil is. And this is what we call dating. Okay, there's two different um, kind of main techniques of dating. Um, the first one, which is what we're going to look at today, is relative dating, which does not mean dating your relatives. It means looking at the age or the date of something relative to something else. OK, um, and we'll go through these two terms in a second. Um, in the next lesson, we will look at absolute dating, um, which is pretty much a whole lesson in itself. It's a bit more um, kind of complex than relative dating. So relative dating is also called comparative dating. And this allows us to compare um, the age of a fossil to another fossil. OK, so it basically tells us whether a fossil is older or younger than another fossil but it doesn't say what its actual age is. 
Um, there's a term for this which is called stratigraphy or stratigraphic dating. Um, basically, rock layers, when they form, are called strata, which is where the stratigraphy comes from. So each of these layers is called a stratum, which is the singular. Okay, so we've got a stratum there, we've got another stratum, another stratum, another one, another one. Together we would call those strata. There are five strata in this particular bit of earth. Um, the key thing here is that obviously newest rocks form closer to the earth's surface. So rocks either form by sediment um, being laid down or things like volcanic ash that then um, dries up and forms rock. Okay, so down here we've got the oldest layers of earth. Up here we've got the youngest or the newest layers. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's pick this. We've got this fossil here, which is in the third stratum. Um, there is a way to get the actual age of this fossil. Okay, but we won't look at that until the next lesson. But let's say we know somehow we know that this fossil is 100 million years old. Okay, we know that's 100 million years old. Then this other fossil is found, okay? And that fossil is in a younger layer of rock. We know that this fossil is younger than this one, okay? It doesn't necessarily mean that that species only existed in this time, but this particular fossil that has been found is younger than 100 million years old because it's in a fresher or a newer layer of rock. Okay, don't worry too much about the, um, the age. Like I said, we'll cover that in the next lesson. But we can say that this fossil is younger than this one, um, but it's older than this one because that again was found in a newer layer of rock. Um, in the quiz, um, I have included this diagram. I want you to have a go um, at answering some of the questions. Um, I'll just explain it first. In this, we've got four different locations. Okay, so let's imagine, you know, this is a location in um, Africa, this is one in Asia, this is North America, and this is Europe. Okay, I've just made that up, but four different locations around the world. There's four letters here, we've got A, B, C, D. They are showing the different strata, okay? Now, if you look across these four locations, you'll notice that they don't have the same strata, okay? Different conditions, different rock. Just as we don't have, you know, the same landscape ever in the world, you will have different rock layers. So in location one, all four of those rock layers exist. In location three, for example, only that oldest rock layer exists, okay? Um, so they're the strata. Then we have these numbers here, which point to four different species of fossils that have been found. Okay, so if we go down to this guy here, number four, who looks like a bit of a weird bug, um, that fossil is only found in um, stratum A. Okay, if you move up, that shape doesn't come up here or here or here. It's only found in stratum A. And it was found in each of those locations. So this organism lived all over the world a very, very, very long time ago. And then we can assume, we don't know for sure, but we can assume that that fossil became extinct or that species became extinct in this time period because fossils have never been found in younger layers of rock. Okay, so that's the oldest species in this example, and it didn't appear again later. Um, let's look at this one now, which is number two. It's the same, the same species. So this kind of butterfly looking thing existed back in this time period, okay, because we found fossils in stratum A. It also existed in stratum B. Okay, there was fossils found then. And if we move up, it also existed in stratum C. So this species lived for a much longer period of time than species number four because it has been found in multiple different layers of um, sedimentary rock. Okay, similar thing with 
this one, another type of shell, it kind of looks like a carrot, um, that existed in stratum B, it existed in stratum D, or we found fossils of it in stratum D. In this location, they haven't found any fossils in stratum D, but if we move across to location two and to location four, that fossil has been found in those strata. So again, that lived for a long period of time. Okay, the youngest fossil or the one that we assume evolved the most recently would be this one because it's not found in, in stratum B or stratum A in any of the locations. So we can assume that that evolved in the time period that stratum C um, was, was laid down and became sedimentary rock. Um, just the final thing to note about um, relative dating of fossils, there's things that are referred to as index fossils. Okay, this is basically a record or a library of fossils that has been created that shows um, different fossils that we know specific information about. Okay, to become an index fossil, a fossil must be distinctive, so it's very easy to identify. It doesn't really look like anything else. So for example, you know, this fossil here, very distinctive um, shape. If that fossil is found anywhere in the world, they can say, yep, pretty confident that was this particular species. It also needs to have been abundant, which basically means that we have found lots of fossils of them. Okay, and that there are a lot of fossils like this where, you know, this particular fossil has been found all over the world. It's really distinctive and we found heaps of them. Index fossils need to have been widely distributed geographically. So again, they were found all over the world, like this one, it's in lots of different locations. And then finally, they existed for a relatively short period of time. So again, this one, fossil number three, or species number three, is a really good index fossil because it only existed in stratum C. Okay, it didn't exist, well, we, we haven't found fossils of it in stratums B or A or D. It only existed in that particular time period. What that means is, again, let's say, and we'll explain this in the next lesson, let's say we know that this fossil was um, 100 million years old, um, and it was found in lots of different places, and it only existed in that time period. When another fossil gets found, let's say, you know, a new fossil appeared here that looks like a star, okay, and it was found in a newer layer of rock, we could estimate that that lived 50 million years ago, okay, more recently than that one. Okay, so when unknown fossils are discovered and they're found near index fossils, the index fossil can basically be used to guess a few things about that fossil. Some people get really, really confused by this. If that is the case, do not stress. Um, in terms of what you kind of really need to know about this, it's more the like, you know, which of these fossils is oldest, which is youngest and why. So you just being able to relate to your knowledge that new rock forms closer to the surface of Earth, so therefore something that's found really deep is really old. All right, so today we looked at the um, key changes in Earth's geology over time. We looked at that um, geological time scale. We've looked at how fossils are formed, the different types of fossils, and then also just looking at the relative age of fossils. Thank you.